What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy Beehive Radio shouting. Hey, man, I got an A-Town legend, one of the greatest producers to ever come out of the city and in the game as well. DJ Tupac in this thing. What's good with it, boss? You back, baby. What's happening? Hey, man, first of all, appreciate you coming through this thing as always. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always a pleasure to get a goat and an icon in the building to really bring some perspective you, to brother. the game at the same time, Thank man. You. Now, Thank uh... You. Last week, too, we had the pleasure of being invited out there to that Donda listening party, man. Mm. Kanye West got the bins, packed it out, sold it out. That shit was crazy. It, it was crazy as hell. First of all, tell me, what was your thoughts when you went in there and you saw the whole vibe of the artists, that, well, the audience and the atmosphere and everything that was going on in there? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, keeping it 100. Uh -huh. First, my first thoughts when I got the phone call, my boy Slim Calhoun hit Slim me. Slim right? Cutter. Slim. He hit me. So I think, because uh, him and Fonz were Bentley, you know, they've been knowing partner, each other partner, since partner. kids. So yeah. it's super cool. So I guess when they was trying to get the whole VIP list together, you mm -hmm. know, they hit me and was like, yo, Tom, you know, what you doing, uh, what, Thursday? Uh huh. Said, what you doing Thursday? I'm like, yo, you know, shit, what's going on? Yeah. You know, Kanye in town and woo, woo, woo. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, which one of my laptops I'm finna take right here and bang some heads out? You know what I mean? With yes, MIDI sir. control, which MP I'm gonna take. Thanks. And uh, they was like, oh, now you having an event. And, um, you know, was, we want to invite you to. So I didn't know what the hell it was, really. Yeah. I didn't even know. I, I'm thinking they finna say, come to the studio and bang out. You That's know right. What I mean? So then when they say it was an uh, album release party, I was like, oh, shit, the album done. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Damn, niggas always call me at the end of their <laughs> album. I hate that shit. Like, I ain't call me when we was working, man. Exactly. I don't with Toomp no more. So, um, um, so when I got there, I started seeing a goodie mob, and yeah. I saw organized me uh, sleeping, and them, all of us walked in together. Yeah. And so I was asking them, like, hey, man, so I'm walking in there lame as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, fellas, so what is this shit, man? Yeah. They said, man, it's supposed to be an album release party. I'm like, supposed to be, okay. Yeah. I say, so the album coming out? They said, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, that was fast. Yeah. But last I heard, that he was still recording. And, you know, I'm like, well, shit, all right, so we all in the big lobby. That's when I ran into you. Yeah. We started kicking it. You yeah. know, we started politicking. That's right. And I still didn't know, and everybody was like, boy, you seen what was outside? I'm like, no, nah, what are they doing? But I know it looked like it was snowing or some shit. Yeah, exactly. So I really still was green <laughs> to what the hell was going on. <laughs> yeah. I said, and so while we sitting there, I said, so is he performing? They said, I think. I said, well, he just going to play the album? I'm like, okay, this is real interesting. So I'm thinking everything is supposed to go on in the lobby where we were. Yeah. I didn't know it was a whole stadium situation. Ooh. That's just how green I am. <laughs> That's just how much I stay in the house, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> I need to get my ass out a little more. I feel but, you. Um, and so when they was like, all right, everybody, showtime, let's go. Man, when I walked out there and saw the people, I was like, man, this is another soccer <laughs> game or what? Like this shit, Super Bowl yeah. playoff, man. It was man. He filled that joint up, bro. Crazy. And um, I'm like, yo, boy, the A really showed up for yay. Yeah. Like, okay, here we go. You yeah. Know? I think I played a little part in this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, from from my history, you know, for the graduation album. That's, that's when I know a lot of my folks from the A started really fucking with them. You know, exactly. graduation. So you know. When you went out there and you saw that audience and you could see the energy in the building and that music started playing, what was going through your mind at that time? And then when you think about just the rollout of albums and listening parties that you have been to in the past compared to that one, come on, boy, we where do you rank that? that and how do you compare and contrast that? that? Shit, it's honestly I, one of the best rollouts as far as an album release was I think one of the ones that Jeezy did at Visions. Ooh. I think BMF and all the yeah. people were still out too. <laughs> Man, that shit was like crazy. Yeah. You know, it was just the energy was, I think everybody had on black, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It was just crazy. I would never forget that. You know, just just think that building don't even exist no more. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think nothing could really top that one. Yeah. Until this one, and and, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, man, this boy here is a genius. He really reached in his bag. I don't know who around him, or was this his idea, or, or, or Derek's idea, Farnsworth. Everybody yeah. knows, you know, Derek is real name. Yeah. But um, I didn't know who idea it was. But I, once I saw everything and, and saw speakers everywhere, I'm like, oh, this shit is brilliant. Yeah. But the first thing you know, I'm a geek. I'm a tech geek. I'm like, what this shit's gonna sound like when yeah. the music come on? You yeah. Know? It's like, like I was talking about earlier, I heard um, when they first opened it, 
the uh, Mercedes, it was a country artist or whatever mm -hmm. performed there, and I know everybody was complaining about the acoustics and yeah. how they really couldn't hear what was going on. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing, you know, when he first came out, now the low ends and that one record, was, it was hitting, it was hitting. <laughs> but um, I was, you know, I, I was just listening. Yeah, you know, I was just listening. You yeah. Know? What you got from it? Like, what, well, for me, it was just an energy thing and a vibe thing. When mm -hmm. I went in there, you know, we was all kicking it, drinking, and I mean, you know, we was able to get our minds right before we even went in there. Mm -hmm. Then when we got in there, when I saw that that whole stadium was packed, it was like, wow, everybody's yeah. coming in here just to listen. A lot of then when that music, too. oh man, he brought out everybody. Yeah, he brought Every out the you, you Rainbow Coalition of. in that yes, thing. So then, when that music started playing and people started going crazy, mm -hmm. it was like, my God, how can one man have all this power? power? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I was crazy, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was listening to that and then I was thinking, okay, I heard Jay-Z pop out of nowhere on a verse. Yeah. I heard I uh, Lil Baby pop out of nowhere on a verse. Mm -hmm. Those moments, you know, kind of triggered the audience to go a little crazy. Yeah. Uh, when he walked out there and he started walking around, I was like, okay, yeah, when you gonna hit that mic and start preaching and talking your stuff, and uh, that album oh, kept on B. playing. <laughs> now that's what I was. Honestly, man, on some, I guess I'm, we, we, we country boys. Yeah. We show a lot of hospitality. Yeah. And when we open our doors to folks, man, we really, we, we figured we want to get that hospitality, you know, yeah. in return. And I really thought it would be something, you know, that he would, you know, pick up the mic somewhere and say, hey, y'all, you know, thanks for coming out. Thanks for fucking with me. Yo, yeah. yo, you know what yeah. I mean? But, uh, and it was cool, but I was like, because oh, I, I felt the same way. I was yeah. like, okay, he dancing around for a minute, but somewhere he going to pick up the mic and just yeah. holler at the you crowd. Hello? You know, acknowledge <laughs> folks. You know, you know how Jay-Z used to do at the end of his concerts? Yeah. And just acknowledge the whole crowd. Hey, yeah. man, shine the light and start pointing people out. Oh, I like what you got on. Oh, y'all yeah. looking good together. All that shit there, that, that creates a real, that makes your fans just embrace you even yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Even people who just, Halfway like Jay Z might love him now. Yeah, if he shot him he, out, just because he shouted them out. Exactly. Somebody he don't know. Hey man, you with the red hat? You and your lady? Whoa, y'all looking good together? Come I like on that. now. That kind of shit matters. So I thought that Ye would at least you know address us. But he left us. He just walked because I didn't know it was over. Yeah. Everybody just having to look at each other and say, "You think he coming back out?" <laughs> My God. And then we just left. You know. Yeah. Now, as somebody that won a Grammy with Ye. Right. Can you talk to me about that creative process? Because, I mean, you know, you and Ye go back and you brought a lot of funk to his music at the Definitely. same time. You know, Definitely. that's how the South got, you know, embracing. We started embracing Kanye through that tomb sound. So yes. for you, what was it like on a production end of things when you were listening to what was going on and just the whole vibe of the oh, music? Oh, man. Oh, B, boy, you put me in the corner. Fuck it. I'm going to keep it 100. But, um... <laughs> Just as a producer, <clears throat> as a music guy, as a guy who really loved hip hop, yeah, and hip hop um, is derived from drums, yeah, you know, as far as us, yeah, you know, we come from. That's okay. right. That's right. We send signals across a uh, whole across ocean. the ocean, yeah, with drums. Facts. That's our shit. The beat. Yeah. That's the rhythm. And when I heard a lot of the songs that just didn't have drums, cause I heard a few that it was one with some wicked ass piano. Yeah, I heard that. And I'm like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so okay. And that yeah. shit was about to, I thought it was about to drop and it was like, oh, is it? Then he started talking. I was like, damn, that's it? Yeah. Is that the song? Yeah. So my first thing is like, I hope the album don't sound like this. Ooh. Cause that sound like, that could be dope. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. If, if, if I was in the studio, I'd say, hey, yeah, you know, is the shit gonna drop anywhere? Yeah. Cause you build us up and you thinking that that shit finna go crazy. Go crazy and it go to another song. And I was, I was like, ah, oh, this album must not be finished. Cause you had a lot of people who was like, oh, the album coming out in a few hours. I said, no brother, from where I come from, you gotta go through mixing. And, I, and I've seen Kanye mix records seven mm -hmm. times or more. Because, you know, sonically it's something he was looking for. I'm like, yo, if y'all think this album right here that he's performing, that he's playing to us, going to be out in a few hours, y'all really got to be tripping. Ooh. But then you got these people who try to put cats on a pedestal. Hey, man, shit, too. Uh-uh, boy, with technology. <laughs> Some shit could come out overnight. I said, bruh, that's for somebody who's ready. independent and yeah. who don't care what it sound like. Yeah. But that man right there cares about what his shit sound like. Exactly. And I promise you, I could have better everybody in the building. This album ain't coming out in a few hours like y'all think. 
My God. Especially if I saw footage of 2 Chainz still in that recording. Exactly. So I'm like, what make y'all think this man really going to rush and put Thor album out unmixed He's a mastered. perfectionist. He ain't about to put out no craziness. And the minute that, after the cusser and the next day, oh, the album didn't release. I'm sitting here like, do y'all really think this shit was coming out? So People now. People can be funny, man. And sometimes they just. Yeah. They not, cry too, a little too much. Exactly. Too hard. You, you know, know that we call them fanboys. Yeah. And the issue is, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You got these fanboys out there like, whatever Ye does, I just, uh, but yeah. answer me this though, too, mm. as a super producer and somebody that understands what's going on, I need you to come at this from a commentator perspective. Okay. What is going on in that binge right now? When Kanye went out there and played that music and said, you know what, I'm about to move into the bins and finish this album, what the hell is going on in there, too? I wish I could tell you, but just from being on the outside looking in, I'm thinking right now he had a chance to really gauge um, the just the reaction, and you know he know how important Atlanta is. You know mm -hmm. we, you know Atlanta influences everything at Thanks. this moment. It's been like that for double digit years now. Thanks. You know, it may sound a little arrogant <laughs> coming from us. You know, from Atlanta eight. I mean, it is what it is. It's yelling, but that's what it is. So. I guess his whole thing is, like you say, it may be a certain reaction that he may have been looking for mm -hmm. and decided, hey, let me go back, you know, to the drawing board. Um, but like I say, drums, man. And so I'm not going to name these producers, but it was like two or three producers in there were like, shit, too, you know, a lot of shit just is cool without drums. And I'm like, bruh, I dare you to go back home and take the drums out of some of your hottest beats. Talking exactly. about you get ready to play it for somebody. Please, yeah. man, do not yeah. do that, yeah. sir. Oh. Don't just sit here and tell me taking drums out your track is the new wave. Exactly. Just because you just heard Ye play some <laughs> shit with no drums. Like, have you lost your mind, brother? Yeah. So, and so that's why I'm sitting here like, man, y'all, because it was wild because, I mean, I'm a fan too. Yeah. And I'm a friend. Yeah. But at the same time, I just saw people bobbing their heads to stuff that wasn't even bobbable. Ooh. It's like, okay, y'all hear the lyrics, but y'all bobbing your head trying to make this shit. Do something. Way, yeah, y'all trying to make it do yeah. something that is that we thought it was going to do. And like you say, it raised everybody up. And right when you think a beat's going to drop, whew, that shit go to another song. Okay. I just feel that he's teasing us. I would really love to help him put that album together. Talk but. to me about Can't <laughs> Tell Me Nothing. What was that creative process when you were in there with Ye cranking up that kind of music? Well, man? create. Well, one thing about Can't Tell Me Nothing, that was more like uh, sending files back and forth to each other. Uh -huh. Jeezy was the um, 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 liaison between that. He broke it, that whole thing mm -hmm. because it was originally a Jeezy song, I Got Money, with yeah. him and Tip. But Kanye wanted to do a remix. That's why, you know, yeah. you know, wait till I get my money right. His yeah. whole thing was like, I'm going to bring another concept to what Jeezy was talking about, which is money. Mm -hmm. But I just hear something else. Yeah. He just wanted to get that to, you know, bring that element. And it started off as supposed to be a, a I Got Money remix. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody didn't agree with all the elements was in it. But I was crazy about the, oh. Yeah. Everybody yeah. didn't like the, you know. What? Yeah, my guy didn't like the, oh. I was like, yo, man, that's the guts of this shit. That's it. But he ended up getting on the remix, you yeah. know what I mean? But um, it was us just sending files back and forth to each other, mm -hmm. you know, and we came, that's what we came up with. And once we got together, we decided, like, hey, man, this is what it is. Damn, okay, a new song out of I Got Money Remix. And now it's a whole other song called Can't Tell Me Nothing. And my God. One of the biggest yay records to this day, you know? The Grammy. Good life. Mm -hmm. Break that one down, though, man. Well, good life. Um, a little bit of that is on YouTube. Uh, Ye was playing with a. Um, first of all, we knew we wanted like a upper tempo record with mm -hmm. um with a certain energy, and you know back and what's crazy is funny because even back then his whole thing was you know stadium status. Mm -hmm. You know that's why even on Big Brother, you know he's yeah. stadium status. Yeah, and it's crazy. He's at a, a stadium right now. You see what I'm saying? Crazy. So. That's what we was like with Good mm. Life. We was like, yo, you know, we was just want a certain energy. Um, and uh, I think around that time, what was it? Uh, it was a song that he was, uh, these motherfuckers, these. That was Rich Boy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Around the throw time. Throw some D's on it. Yeah, bit. throw some yeah. D's. Around yeah. the time he was on that Rich Boy's remix. Yeah. Because I was there when he was just laying his verse down and everything. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you know, Polo had brought it to him. It was like, yo, and then he got on it. 
And that's when Ye figured, like, hey, man, I need something with some more energy, kind of yeah. like this. So he was playing with the Michael Jackson sample. Yeah. And um, and I heard where he was going. He had it in the MP2000. Mm. But I had my 60 and my Rolling Phantom set off to the side. You uh, know, them my two. Yeah, main, bad boys. Them, I'm them with my you. boys right there. Yeah. Hardware. Yeah. <laughs> Hardware, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was. I had a reason, but I just wasn't on. Yeah, that I wasn't really sure about it producing time for that on. Yet. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so he was playing with the sample, but my whole thing was like he had it slowed down for a certain tempo, and I was like, "Yo," I say, "Where well, you have it now is kind of toned down so low to where when we want to add music, it's going to be at a key that's kind of a sad key." Mm. So. I brought it back up to the original key of But the original is That's the yeah, end. Yeah. Once again, you already know most records that we sampled as the classics are really at the end of the song. Yeah. That's the guts of it. Thanks. So when he sampled that, I was like, all right. But his was So when you get into the, just the, the whole theory of music, that key would have been so low that it wouldn't have had that same energy. So I was like, yo, I'm getting ready to let me get that. I'm going to tune it back up to its original key. Mm -hmm. That way it's going to be easier for us to build music around. Yeah. And boom, you know, once he sent the sample to me, I threw it in the Rolling Phantom, Ooh. ASR, chopped it up. Then I put the MP in there and we just, the magic just started going from there. And he started bobbing around the room writing in, t in his head. That's why, yeah, you can pull up YouTube footage, just a little bitty, yeah, little piece of it, man. I might have been like 30 pounds heavier back then. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, yeah, it was the magic, man, you know, and, and that was just us really sitting in there working like what producers do and slash artists, you know what I mean? Facts. When you speak of stadium music, though, man, I mm -hmm. mean, we got to go back to that big brother because mm -hmm. even Ye understood what y'all were making at that time. Mm -hmm. Take me through the production process of that one and then understanding what y'all was trying to do at that time. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing with Ye. The way uh, Ye is really a collaborative producer, mm. you know. You may come in with a, I may come in with a, usually a producer could come in with a track that's, that he feel is complete, but Ye might say, hey, I like that, but I want to change the drums. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. Oh, I think that bass line should come out. Yeah, You got some cats who will take that shit personally and be like, man, no, don't fuck up my beat. That was the <laughs> most important shit. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. that's, that's producer stuff. You know, yeah. I know a few, I can name some big name producers who work with Ye who were upset because they didn't like the way their song came out. Uh -huh. you, know, you know, if you walk in with your track a certain way, you expect it to be accepted that way. That way. Yeah. You don't want nobody to take you know certain elements out that you feel was important. Mm -hmm. So um, Big Brother was one of them songs really where uh, Ye was like, hey, I'm just gonna be the artist on this one. Cause the yeah. other one we collab, you yeah. know, Good good Life. I mean, uh, yeah, Good Life and Can't Tell Me Nothing. Mm -hmm. But Big Brother, that was all me. Like only might've been additional lead guitar or whatever. Yeah. But all those instruments, I played all those joints, man. So and, um, so that was all me. He didn't take anything out. Exactly. He took that track exactly the way it was, the way I brought it. So when it comes down to the creative process of getting two legends and icons in the studio together, mm -hmm. how does that go, though, Toon? Because, see, I'm trying to get into the mind of Ye and the people that's in there cooking at the bins right now as we speak. What the mm -hmm. hell is going on in there, Toon? I wish I could tell you because, see, yeah, I think how long that's been since we did that graduation uh, album. And like I say, Kanye produced a different way a little bit now. Because okay. when we were working on graduation, it was mostly me and him in the studio. Mm -hmm. And if you had a few other producers who would come through, but in the creative process, it was mostly me and him. Mm -hmm. uh, he really didn't have too many writers. But mm -hmm. right now, he got like three or four writers on team. You know, you got Psy High. You got Pusha T. Si. Yeah, Pusha. <laughs> he got some cold you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, but... I don't know, but I listened to some of the records, though. I, I'm, I'm going to just have to listen to the records again. Because yeah. I heard they, they was playing some of them on satellite radio. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, man, for you to have all these writers in the room, I figured I would hear more, mm -hmm. some more lyrical shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's I don't know. The way he's producing now, just for me, you know, listening to the cats who've sat with him, they, um, it's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, I would say. 
You know what I mean? And see, let me get in here though. It's too, a lot, too, and I don't as you we know, continue some, because see, yeah, we got a lot of people good. that are gonna be critical of you being critical about what you heard. Just like I was talking about the fanboys earlier, so uh, I just have to touch that base to let them understand that you want a Grammy with Kanye. Yes. Okay. So yes. you have the right to say yeah, whatever I got the hell the right you want to say. And man, come on, man! I've been producing since 1985. Exactly. Man. And I've been loving music before hip hop even came. Like, I, I wanted to be a singer when I was a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? I used to look at album covers. And imagine myself on stage playing them instruments. Yeah. And then later on, you know, hip hop came and I found out that I had the knack to be a DJ <laughs> and I was incredible at beating on the school desk. Exactly. You know, make but some of the hardest beats Come on the on. lunch table. So my God. And that's why I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm a beat maker later on. I was like, oh shit, I'm a producer. So I definitely know music. Mm -hmm. Um so now and, back to what you was hearing on satellite. And how did that affect you differently from what you heard in that stadium? Um I heard the song, but I was still like, I still felt like he needs something stronger right about now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially when you, when you, I think when an artist is in a position to where it's some um, lightweight rivalry going on, you know, people still looking at him and Drake as, you know, I heard uh, they got a, you know, I heard they made a made amends or whatnot. Yeah. But people are still comparing the two. Yeah. Because when you think of your, Top five, you know, people always going to say, you know, Kanye, you know, yeah. they'll say Jay, yeah. Kanye, Drake, yeah. you know, uh, King, um, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think for for Ye to continue being in that top five or that top seven or however, you know, many people got in their tops, maybe three. Yeah. He definitely, um, I, I, I just want to, I want to, I want to hear some more lyrics, man. You know, definitely beats. But as far as the artists, I want to I want to just hear some lyrics. Like, where that shock value at that you usually bring? You know, that, that yeah. slickness, you know? Yeah. Like, ooh, ooh, you heard what he said? Take that shit back. Exactly. I'm waiting to hear that. And once I hear that, I don't even have to be on the album. I'm just going to embrace it as a fan. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's what I'm looking for. You know, like I said, because this, this is, we had a moment right now. Like, you still got... You got cats like Lil Baby, who kicking ass. Come and, on, man. Man, that man might have about five more albums ready, and <laughs> believe me, and all of them got them beats, Come and those on. drums. Ready to go. Baby got lyrics, but he makes sure that the drums are hitting, well, they need and, to and be whatever at. tracks he select to get on, he makes sure that it's gonna move, it moves him, and he makes sure, and now he, by now, Baby know what his fans, yeah. you know, what moves him. Same thing with Drake and anybody else that you could think of. Just like how you got J. Cole with this song with, um what? 21 Savage. Yeah, I'm all right. A little sample in yeah, there. Yeah. And they brought that element again. What Thanks. was the, the first one was, I love you. Um, a lot, right? Yeah. And they brought that same feel. Cup, that yeah. feel again, yeah. but a totally different record. Facts. And the beats. It's uh, beating. Like, uh, how can you do this shit with no beats, bro? Answer me this, though, Toon. As a producer and somebody with real deal longevity, mm -hmm. how has your creative process changed over the years? And how do you think the time, the signs of the times affect your production, man? Or mm. is it just the same thing? Or how do you grow? Uh, or how do you change with it? Well, I would say um, definitely the signs of the time. You know how when I did um, What You Know for T.I. Yeah. That was real anthem, a lot of music. Facts. Um, it was like 50-50, like 50% music, 50% drums, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? But now it's more of a drum-driven game again, especially when you think about female rappers. Mm -hmm. You even never know a lot of female songs, really like, um, what's her name? Um, you got Cardi B, you got um, um, Nicki. No, 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 well, Nicki, she got something out, but right now, no, what's her name? Megan. Yeah. And it's another, uh, what's the female, um, what's the new dude, man? He sounds just like Raheem the Dream. BRS Cash? No, he's a producer. Yeah, think, oh, beat, producer. Beat King. Oh, that's my dog, Beat King. Man, that nigga, that cold. I want to meet, where's he from, <laughs> man, man? That's him right here, man. I'll run yeah, with him. Leave. Leave. There you go. Man. Yeah. That's a beat driven. It ain't no that music. Is the fam. Boom. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so it's like, it's a, it's a beat driven game right yeah. now. So now yeah. I have to really. Make sure to not do all the anthem shit that I used to do because yeah. it's 2021. Uh, you can't put all that music in there now, too. Now. You got to just focus on the beat first because especially female rappers, I, you know, the ones that I know is more female rappers are drawn to the beat-driven tracks more than the music-driven. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, oh, okay. 
right now, honestly, I feel like now is the time to where any cat, you know, yeah, you can find you a cool male artist, but you got to understand, a lot of these niggas still in the street. Yeah. A lot of them still getting in trouble. A lot Come of them on. trying to get in trouble, thinking that that's a part of they MO that's yeah. going to make, get bring more fans. Yeah. That shit does not bring more fans <laughs> because you got bodies. <laughs> I wish y'all that does not bring more fans, y'all. That really makes the feds. It brings more feds. It brings more feds, and (laughs) we kind of scared of you. Yeah. So don't think that you just got to be this main guy with this aura around you to be accepted by the masses. So yeah, honestly, nowadays, bro, I think it's cool for a cat to really go through some strip clubs and find that that girl who got that. Even if it ain't strip club, just a girl who got the look, the swag, that can stay on beat. Even Mm -hmm. if I had to write her shit, yeah, like that's really the wave now to find a nice ass female because they 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 coming through, man. It's a swarm of them right about now. Now I gotta bring it back to Yay one more time. And you ain't gotta worry about keeping motherfuckers out of jail. Facts. (laughs) Shit, I gotta bring it back to Yay one more time though, Tom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. The Good Life that brought home the Grammy. Mm-hmm. Can't tell me nothing is what bridged Kanye to the South. To the hood for sure. Big Brother was the iconic song that he was able to explain exactly what the hell was going on between him and Jay-Z. And so many people can run Big Brother parallel with so many other experiences that they go through. That's why that's that's why so many people embrace that song. Because you can run that. You know, it it, it it runs with a lot of people's situation that they've gone through, even with a real big brother in life. Like, yeah. you know, hey, man, how can I approach this situation? And oh, I'm being treated this way or some little brother. Yeah. So it's like it was a real personal song that a lot of folks can relate to. That's why to this day they say that's one of their favorite Yay records. Well, see, what I'm no trying single. to say is you killed the image uh, industry with the Grammy. Mm-hmm. You killed the streets but can't tell me nothing. Yes, sir. And you touched the hearts of men with Big Brother. Right. What is it that Donda needs? So far from what I've heard in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Donda needs um, that true anthem, man. You know, um, mm. that's still Kanye-driven, not uh, feature-driven. You know what I mean? Ooh. I heard, yeah, you know, I heard maybe on the record, I think Roddy Rich was on one, too. Mm-hmm. And I heard um, Jay-Z, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's good to hear the features, just be like, oh, shit, he on the album. But, man, what Yeah, you don't right? need them goddamn features. Come on, yeah. And that ain't no disrespect to the features, because yeah, all yeah, of them yeah. are I major mean, features, to have but that's Kanye. Features, but, yeah, but still, like, we still focusing on you, yeah. Yeah. We happy to hear you and Jay, you know, back cool or whatnot. But, excuse me, we still just, we, we want to hear that yay. Yeah. And, yeah. um... That's why I was like, I, I try not to really judge anything until I can really hear that shit in my system and just yeah. <laughs> turn the shit up in my Porsche or whatever vehicle I'm in and, and ride and just Man. fill it up, put it on, you know, fill up with gas and just go in circles, you know, Come 285 on. and ride. But um, I really try not to judge it from what I've heard from Mercedes. But from but one thing I can say, listening to it sonically. Hey, it's, it's a few things missing. It's a few mm-hmm. things missing sonically. So if album. you were to go into that Benz right now, which you'll probably wind up doing, <laughs> what would you tell <laughs> Ye? First, I would, um, and this would, you know, one thing, man, in my 52 years of being on this planet, I know humans very well. Okay, then. So uh, i definitely go in, you know, um, I wouldn't want him to feel he had to have his guards up. i go, you know, through yeah. it in my most humble um, approach. And really just be like, hey, you know, kind of like how a good teacher would say, hey, that's not how you do that. They'll say, hmm, why you, why did you do, do that? that? Yeah. Ooh. Why, why, what, what made you do that? Mm-hmm. But he won't know if it's good or bad. I'd be like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's how you got to approach situations because you don't know. And like I said, me and him cool, but, I, you know, people change after a while, yeah. you know. He just came from out of a divorce. Yeah. So it's a few things that, you know, that. That most likely he want to uh, pour out personally on that album, so it may be one of a real personal album. You know what I Ooh. mean? So that's why sometimes you really that's why it's like you got to ask why before you really bring. Hey man, this is why I think you need. Hmm. Let me see. What, so where you going with this? You know, is this based around your mom? Mm. If, if if so, if you naming this song Dunder after moms, where that mom record at? That's gonna make everybody goddamn just eyes just. Because you already got Big and Brother. You, and yeah, and you paint incredible pictures. Where's that Dunder record? Let me hear that good record about your mom, dog. Like, that's going to make every nigga who mom 
ain't here no more just feel like oh my god that's my favorite shit on the album dear mama 2021 yeah i would i would and that's the type of conversation that we would have while working a lot of time when the music stopped when everybody eating you know yeah take that lunch break you know turn everything down don't want to hear nothing now we just want to hear each other yeah that's a conversation if i was in there i would bring that up like hey man if you're gonna name this song after your mom let's make one of the dopest mom records ever my god to just just fuck everybody up you know what i mean 